This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. Here we are uh, dealing with derived units. Okay, as we all know, there are seven fundamental units, isn't it? But the number of physical quantities in the universe they are very large isn't it physical quantities number uh, they are huge in number so if we give a different unit for all the physical quantities then it will be complex isn't it yes for that what we'll do is we'll derive the units for various physical quantities apart from the fundamental quantities for all the other physical quantities we derive units using the fundamental seven units so those are called as derived units okay all the other units of different physical quantities can be expressed as a combination of these seven base units of si for example if we consider si unit of acceleration so acceleration we know displacement divided by time square displacement is length so the unit for this length we have in the fundamental units isn't it this length is an is a fundamental unit and we measure length in terms of meter similarly time is also a fundamental unit and we measure this time using unit called as second so this is second so the unit of this acceleration is meter per second square so this acceleration is a derived physical quantity and this meter per second square is a derived unit for this acceleration so this unit of acceleration we derived it from the two fundamental units of length and time that is meter and second square understood so these are the one example of this derived unit if i so i'll consider and another example of work so we know work is nothing but force into displacement isn't it again the unit of this force is what is the unit of this force yes the unit of force is kg meter s square so this force is again a derived quantity it is not a fundamental quantity and the unit of this displacement is meter okay so the unit of work is kg meter square divided by s square so this is again a derived quantity so the derived quantity is a work and the unit for this work is kg meter square per second square okay that is a derived unit so this is the importance of derived units so along with this we have units called as supplementary units what are the supplementary units i already told you that there are seven fundamental base quantities okay there are seven base quantities but along with the seven base quantities we have two units which are added to this si unit of system that is one is defined for plane angle okay and i already explained it using a figure isn't it 
that is given by d theta and the plane angle d theta is the ratio of length of the arc ds divided by the radius r so if i consider this figure this is the arc that is arc ds and this is o this is d theta and this is r so this plane angle d theta is the length of the arc by radius ratio of length of the arc ds by the radius that is r this is one of the supplementary unit and the other supplementary unit is known as uh, it is defined for solid angle and if i consider the other figure so this the one more unit is plane angle this is d pi this is d a and this is the radius r okay so this solid angle d pi is given as the ratio of intercepted area d a over the apex o okay to the square of the radius that is given by r square so these two that is um, plane angle as well as solid angle are the supplementary units okay now let us study some of the physical norms for the use of si system so whenever you you know you will write the si units we should keep in mind some of the physical norms the how to use those uh, si units okay so the first one is unit of every physical quantity should be represented according to its symbol okay the usage of symbol is must and that usage of symbol must be correct for length what is the symbol that we use to represent the unit it is meter isn't it for length we can't use symbol like uh, n we can't use isn't it so the usage of this symbol must be correct and we should use symbols only to represent units okay as we can see here for length we use uh, uh, you know meter and for uh, second we use second s isn't it so we should use these symbols properly and the second physical norm 
no full stop should be used within or at the end of the symbol of a unit okay full stop if i say 1 meter it is only this much okay i can't write 1 meter full stop this is again wrong so if i write 1 kg this kg is only this much if i write like uh, kg full stop again this is wrong no pull stop should be used within or at the end okay if i write like this also it is wrong not only within not okay we should not use that pull stop within or not even at the end it is just a plain word so this is one more important physical norm and the third one is symbols for units do not take plural form if i say uh, the length of any uh, the length of this tape is 1 meter i'll write like this isn't it if i say the length of uh, if i consider another tape or another uh, whatever the the surface the length of this surface is 10 meter at that time what i'll write i will just write 10 meter so since it is uh, plural the 10 meter if i write the length of this uh, surface is uh, 10 meters then it is wrong you should consider only singular form of the units okay So, the, these SI system of units, they will not take any plural form. Whatever may be the, uh, the number of quantity, it is, okay, it can be of only one quantity or it is used to denote many number of quantity. Okay, as I gave you, it, if it is 1 meter, 10 meter, 1000 meter, we will write meter only, not meters. Got this? Yeah. And uh, the fourth important physical norm is the units of physical quantities in numerator and denominator should be written as one ratio only. For example, see, which means the unit in case of uh, some derived quantities will write the will take the units from the fundamental units at that time the units should be written in terms of ratio uh, for example acceleration acceleration is given by displacement by time square isn't it we know that acceleration is given by displacement by time square so here we are writing it in terms of ratio so numerator and denominators are in form of ratios isn't it and then we'll write uh, the okay here it should be written like this meter by second square in the form of ratios or we can write like this also like this but if we write like this instead of all this if i write meter by second by second then it is completely wrong so this type of notation is not allowed got this so we should express the numerator and denominator in terms of what yes in terms of ratios and the fifth important physical norm is full name of a unit when it is named after a scientist it is not written with a capital letter but the symbol for that unit has a capital letter for example which means whenever we write a unit some of the units are named after uh, scientist names isn't it we have uh, scientist names as units 
in memory of them so whenever we write the full name of that unit we'll use small letter for example the unit of force is newton the unit of force should be written as newton but in symbol it is newton as n so in uh, symbol it is written as newton like 1 newton 2 newton isn't it but when we write its uh, complete full name of that unit then we'll use small letters like newton isn't it but the units while writing the units will write capital n only so these are the five fundamental physical norms that we should keep in our mind in representing the si units for any physical quantity so it should be a singular form and we should represent it using these symbols and uh, we should not write full stop either at the end or in the middle and uh, it the ratios it should be in terms of ratios right the usi units of any physical quantity should be written in terms of ratios and if it is named after a scientist's name then that unit while writing it in uh, symbols we'll use it capital writer okay we'll use capital letters to represent it okay while writing the full name we'll use the small letter word that is one example is force